it's welcome to the totally awesome fishing show in this episode i'm going to be trying to catch a carp a big carp hopefully over 10 pounds but an unusual bait what bait am i going to be using one of these i'll tell you what they taste nice i might not get many of these on the hook mm. you can get these from the supermarket cheap as chips and a lot sweeter as well that's the large size marshmallow and you can get the small size. The small size generally are used in baking kids' party cakes, that type of thing, putting on top of cakes as decoration, and the kids love them. I'm just hoping the carp do too. The large ones, I don't know. They're big. Hopefully I get a big fish. And if I don't, I'm gonna cut them in half with a pair of scissors. I'll show you the rig up I've got from the tackle right through to the hook. The reel, a spinning reel, fixed spool reel, 15 pounds line on it, an even rod. It's about, I have to read it, 11 feet long. A waggler float. I could free line just the hook bait, but I feel I need a bit of extra casting weight. I've got one of these, a float. There's the balancing shot just here. And down the bottom, here is my barbless hook. This is how I'm gonna rig them up. For the whole size marshmallow, don't forget, they're spongy, squidgy, so I don't need what's called a hair rig where it's offset like this the hooks free I can actually skewer it right through like this I can leave the hook just showing like that so when you strike it pulls through the side or edge of the marshmallow or I can just tuck it right in there tap it and then strike right through it like this the hook pulls through and hopefully you get a hook up alternately if the fish are small and cannot manage a whole marshmallow cut them in half with a pair of scissors and then go through a couple of times because this might be the method to go the reason I'm saying that is because here once you cut them inside look is unbelievably sticky and sweet just there kids love them absolutely and you know what yum yum so do I mm, nom, 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 nom. the small ones are similar I feel these are the ones the carp are going to want and on this size hook, I can roll it around and either use one single one or push it up over the hook and just put two on there. Don't forget, these are really lovely, soft and sweet. Really, I think there's no way a carp would not take one of them. Now I need to get those carp up and feeding hard on the surface to just give me a chance of catching something. I'm going to be using some bread, regular sliced bread, to chum them up in bits and pieces, breaking up, just get it out there. Hopefully that gets them going, and once they're going on that, I can switch over and put a loose feed of the marshmallows out. I'm sure they're not going to refuse them. So don't forget, once you cut these in half, they're very sticky on the inside. The outside have a, a coating or a powder on them so they don't stick. But the inside there is, as you can see, pretty sticky. Always keep a few out there ready to throw in. And if you need to get these baits out a little bit further because they weigh so little, use yourself a bait catapult. Put a few in there and you should be able to shoot them out, hopefully where the carp are. Also, don't be afraid to scatter some down into the margins. They all drift around. And the advantage with these, both large and small marshmallows, they're very, very buoyant. They stand up off the water hugely. If you just drop them in, you'll see they are totally buoyant. They are a great floater bait. Don't forget the backup to get them chummed up. Rather than throwing hundreds and hundreds of marshmallows, just break up pieces of bread, which they're used to seeing on a commercial fishery like this. Get them going on that, and then see if you can't get one. Feeding on the marshmallows. Squeeze them in a ball like this. Out she goes. Amongst the marshmallows, eventually they'll pick them all off. 
Today it's going to be very, very noisy with aircraft. We're near Heathrow Airport and the main UK National Airport and they've altered the flight path to come right over my swim. Already I've seen one or two fish move out there and they're going to start feeding on those, hopefully in the next 20 minutes. I've got one hooked up guys, under the drone of all the jets, feels like a good fish. Is it going to be past the magic 10 or not? You can see out there, maybe in that small camera, all the marshmallows on the surface out there. They're loving it as are the little dicky birds coming over. Here he comes, he's coming in, he's coming in. Oh man, he came off. Do you believe me? I hope so. Anyway, hook pulled out. I'm going to get another one out there. Have I got enough marshmallows? I hope so. As luck or skill or marshmallow would have it, I am hooked up again, folks. On the float, at distance, the marshmallows are all drifting in towards me and I'm about to get mown down by the planes. Let's just hope and pray this one stays on. Feels like a decent fish, people. Feels like a decent fish. Then the thing is, the last one felt like a decent fish till it falls off. Wow. Oh my God. This could go eight pounds. I think I'll get the head cam on for you. Good fish, good powerful fish this one. This is a common carp and he is pulling. That is not a million miles away from eight pounds or even bigger people. I can just get him in the net. I'm gonna consider it mission accomplished. I think I got him, I think I got him, I think I got him. He's in. Right, let's check it out on the map. Oh yes, how nice is that? Lost that first fish, 11 pounds, I've got to call that 11.10. Lovely fish. And they are, are the guys that did the damage. Marshmallows. Do they work? Of course they work. Check him out. Lovely big tail on it, you see, plenty of power. And he loved these. Let's get him back. Big old common carp who likes sweet things. It took a while to get him going, boys, but shows you they have got a sweet tooth for that type of thing. I think I'm gonna catapult a few more out. If I can't catch another bigger one in here, I'm gonna try one of the other lakes. Fingers crossed we get to show you two fish, at least, on these marshmallows. And don't be afraid to cut the big ones up smaller, but when you catapult them out, do them individually, otherwise they just do this, they, they stick to each other. So if you do them individually and put the powdered side down, in the catapult first like that they won't stick to the catapult and they go quite a long way guys i'm filming a squirrel 
<laughs> I'm filming a squirrel and my marshmallow's gone off. We're going to have to switch cameras. I was trying to film a squirrel and <laughs> the rod went off between my uh, two feet. That was pretty ridiculous, people. I was just filming the squirrel and I just heard this little bump. This is a nice fish, you know, this is a nice fish. This is on a big marshmallow, on the large marshmallow. So do we say a large marshmallow and a larger fish? I think we better not say that, but this one, hang on, is pulling a bit of drag then. I feel this might be a nice fish. Now it has been heard that there's catfish that will actually take bread and stuff off the surface, but I've got plenty of marshmallows out there. I wonder, a catfish on a marshmallow, can it be done? This fish is pumping. This might be a nice fish. A strange fight, a strange sort of pulsing fight on it. That's all I can describe it as. It's, it's taking line off me, people. He's stripping me out. Oh dear. I'm gonna have to take my time, I think. He's way, way out in the middle of the lake. I'm gonna move across here a bit. So he doesn't get me around that uh, I don't want him going around that island over there. You can see that island. I don't need him going around that. Now there's a strange swirl. That is an uncarp like swirl. I'm not altogether sure that this isn't a catfish. I'm just gonna keep the pressure on him nice and even. There's a carp that's taken. See that just came free. It just twanged back. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a catfish on this guys. This could be the first catfish on marshmallow. In British waters, there you go. This is this is a peculiar fight. It does not feel like a carp. Basically, I haven't got too many turns on the reel yet. Oh, got some pressure on there. It's just a weird fight. Now it could ping off at any time, as happens when you don't really know what you've caught. Well, I haven't caught anything at the moment. I hooked up big time on this fish. What on the Lord? I'm getting loads of bubbles coming up, loads of swirls. I just have a feeling this ain't a carp, boys. A lot of twanging going on there, a lot of twanging. Just got to try and maintain pressure, wear him out slowly. Patience is a virtue. They say fishermen have got it, but I don't possess a huge amount of it. You just want to put him in, photograph him, weigh him and put him back. It's the bit in between when you lose them that I don't like. This is almost 100% not a carp. It's a twangy type, oh he's off. I've lost him. Almost sure that's a giant catfish people. And I think the hook's just pinged off, there you go. The hook's just pinged off, there's a telltale sign. Really big catfish, look. There, if I slide this along here, it's like, I guess, catfish slime. Look at that. Big gob of slime. What if it's something like an eel, you don't know. But there you are, lost fish, but we got to film the squirrel. Well, you can doubtless tell by the umbrella that the rain they forecast has arrived. And that's pretty well killed off a lot of the surface fishing action. But I have actually got a fish hooked up here on the marshmallows. I'm guessing it's a carp. It is indeed. They've been very, very tricky and it's got to be, we think, the weather. Well, it's a good scrapping fish, this one, for sure. And I've been casting the marshmallow farther and farther out. They drifted in here, but for some reason the carp seem to be pushed out further. And they like that out there. The planes are pouring across the top of me. Right, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Mr. Marshmallow number two. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. He's in the net. And again, a common carp. Makes no difference, commons, mirrors, they all like uh, sweet things. To be honest, 
They're like children, really, aren't they? Anything sweet, and they're going to have it. There we go. Another common. Hook falls out. Lovely big fat fish. Pleased to catch him. a friend that's beach fishing down on the shore down on the south coast of the UK at the moment at the present time he's just about to pack up he's fishing he's catching absolutely nothing we're discussing it why is it tough fishing today I'm probably 60 or 70 miles away from him he's in the sea I'm in the fresh water we put it down to this big rain this low pressure coming in and he said it's just unloaded in the sky rain of biblical proportions together with thunder and lightning I don't have that yet, but who knows if it's coming. I feel it is, the rain's getting more consistent now. But one thing we were in agreement with, something in the air pressure is upsetting the fish because normally I put floating baits out and little rud and roach nibble away at it. That's not happening today. Normally in the margins, anything drifts in close, whatever you put out there, and especially these small mini marshmallows will be nibbled away at by the small fish. But you can see down here, they just drifted in close and nothing but nothing is taking them. It's got to be the air pressure, but I've got two fish out of it. I'm going to tough it out in this rain, just see if I can't get a third. Well, I'm losing a bit of line on this fish. And the trouble is I don't want to go outside the umbrella. I'm just standing inside the drip zone. Feels like a good fish. Way out, far as I can cast, the largest half a marshmallow. And they cast, you know, a lot further than you think, the big ones. Hopefully we... Whoa, I'm losing, losing, losing line. Hopefully we get to show you this fish because that last one that I did lose, I know pretty sure was a catfish. This one's scrapping hard, it might be the same. Just trying to stay out of the rain. I'm already damp from fishing before I put the umbrella up. I'm sure all you guys that do a lot of this floater fishing on the surface are the same. You don't want to put the umbrella up really. You can't sort of fish underneath it and strike fast enough. And that's what the reason I've got the float on, is because the dimples of the surface here break it all up and then I can't see the actual take. But whereas the float, I can see dip. I don't know what this is, people. I'm, I've really got to be honest. Whoa, it seems like the harder I pull it, the harder it pulls back. So I'm just trying to maintain a fairly constant pressure. I'm kind of hopeful I might, might be able to show you the first catfish I've ever caught on a marshmallow. I may be wrong. If not, it's a decent carp. It's just throwing up a lot of boily swirls that tells me it probably, probably might not be a carp. The first chance I get, I'm going for the net. The second chance I get, I'm going to put my marshmallows away because I figure these geese behind me are going to nail them. I haven't seen this fish at all, have not seen it. I've got the rod whacked over. That's oh, a catfish, I've just seen a tail swirl up. I've just seen a, the first catfish on marshmallow. Maybe. I'm going for it. I'm going to take this. Very, very 
I was almost noodly under the bank. I couldn't get the net in here, it was in a snag to get this catfish out. There you go. Catfish on marshmallow off the top. Don't get me wrong, I have had some uh, catfish here before off the surface. They told me it would take off the surface. I can't believe that, that's a real nice fish. Wowie, what a session. Bit hard, but listen, I'm toughing it out. Let's get him back. see the big jaws they can eat pretty well what they want I'm just going to lower this guy back because they slide out of the mats and away he goes and there are the marshmallows that he missed on the inside This one almost looks like a sort of grass carp in shape. It is in fact another common. So maybe it was the rain not putting them off. Maybe that's oxygenated the surface of the water. Who knows? But that's three carp and a catfish. people I'm on again I've got to venture out into the nasty weather I'm gonna net this one up here a bit I'm trying to keep him clear of the area I'm fishing wow he's got some power in them this one and the ducks over here are now discovering the sweet taste of marshmallows which could be the end of my fishing here here they come steaming in Bread and marshmallows, what more could a duck want? Here he comes. Common carp. Good bend in the Avon rod. What more could you want on a rainy day? And I'm getting more and more and more soaked. In he comes. Sorry about the noise from all the aerial stuff today, guys, but it is very, very busy for some reason. All the airports and everything is. Uh, He's going nuts today. This is his fish. There we go, chunky fat common. About seven pounds, I'm guessing. And the ducks have eaten most of my surface activity. So I might be down to just using one single piece. I've got a couple of pieces out there. One single piece of marshmallow, big marshmallow. Then I can wind it away if they do go for it. Hopefully they won't. Now here's one worth weighing people. This one is a good lump. I think this might, might be bigger than the last one. Or well, the last was 11.11 and I think this one might be bigger. It's 14, 10, 13, 11, 14, 11. Wowie. There's two doubles boys. Surface fishing in the rain. Great big lump of a carp. If he's going to stay still, oh, there we go, boys. 14 11, two doubles, a waggler float, a packet of marshmallows. Get out there and give it some. And do you know what? I think he's coughing marshmallows up here. Beautiful. Away it goes. Another fish worth weighing, boys. Common carp. I think I'm going to weigh this one and then I'm going to pack up. <laughs> 